In this video, I'm gonna show you the five RVs we've owned over the last 12 years and the reasons why we chose them. What's up everyone? My name is Dan and welcome to Freely Roaming. If you're new to RV traveling or you're considering it, picking the right vehicle can be a really daunting task with so many different styles, makes, and models available. Each style of RV is designed to suit a certain type of travel, and knowing which one is right for you isn't that easy when you're just starting out. When we started this lifestyle back in 2008, we were total noobs. After a fair bit of research and seeing all the choices that are available, we quickly realized that there's not one RV that's perfect for every scenario. Everything is a compromise depending on your budget and how you like to travel. In 2007, about a year before we started full-time traveling, our daughter Ava was born. Suddenly we had to carry around a stroller, a car seat, a pack and play, on top of all the normal stuff that you have to take somewhere if you want to spend a night outside of your house. And after a couple of attempts at air travel with an infant and all of this stuff, we quickly knew that it wasn't for us. So that's when we became interested in the idea of RV traveling, but we really had no idea about how to approach it. Back then there was no social media, there were no smartphones, and the only people we could find living this lifestyle were retired couples. We finally found a couple of families who live this way who share their experiences on their websites. There are Greg and Jen of Bare Naked Family and they had three kids, and Rich and Eleanor of Airstream Life with their daughter Emma. With them as inspirations, we knew that this was something families could do, but now all we needed was an RV. We looked in the renting one at first, but rental options at the time were basically limited to white box class C's, and they cost easily over $1,000 for a week long trip. We decided it was gonna be cheaper to find a used one to buy that had good resale value. But it would be a lot of effort to go through the process of doing the research to try to find which one to buy. And if somehow we found out that this lifestyle wasn't for us, all that effort would be wasted. But that didn't matter, we were committed. We went into this process with the attitude of wanting to make it work than expecting it to fail. So our first RV, it was a 2005 Tab Teardrop Travel Trailer that we pay $11,000 for. After a good amount of research and weeks of looking at RV listings on Craigslist, we landed on these small tab travel trailers. They were pretty new to the market at the time and used ones were really hard to come by. We didn't want to waste anybody's time selling as a private party just to kick the tires, so we decided to find a dealership so we can go see the new ones. We found a dealership in Southern California about a couple hours away from us, so we drove down there to go check it out. When we finally got to see it in person, that's when we decided it was the right camper for us. The resale values are good, they're light and easy to handle, they're pretty stylish, and they had plenty of space for a young family of three. It was also at this dealership when we saw a new Airstream in person for the first time. We had heard about them before and seen pictures and knew about their rich history. When we saw them finally in person for the first time at this dealership, we quietly thought to ourselves that if all this works out, we will one day try to get one of these. But that's something we'll talk about later in this video. Okay, so back to the tap. We came home and kept searching and finally found one in Sun City, Arizona for $11,000 that was the right color and the right layout for us. It felt like a lot of money to pay for such a small trailer, especially at a time when we knew so little about RVs. Because we looked at a lot of them and seeing how quickly each one of them is sold at or near the asking price, we knew their asking price was fair and the risks were pretty low. It was also the perfect setup for us at the time. We were only traveling part-time, and it could easily be towed with the vehicle that we already had. It was also small enough that we didn't have to pay to have it stored when we weren't using it. We knew that when it was time for us to upgrade, or if we didn't like the lifestyle after trying it, we had done enough research to know that we can basically sell it for the same price that we had paid for it. Because of this experience, we have done essentially the same to every vehicle and camper that we've bought in the last 12 years. Whenever we could, we always make sure that we bought the right vehicle focusing primarily on resale value and quality to make sure that we didn't regret the decision. And that's exactly what we did about a year later when we decided to upgrade to a bigger trailer. We had spent a couple hundred bucks in small upgrades, but we sold it to someone for basically the exact same price that we had bought it for a year before. It allowed us to really give this lifestyle a try without spending a ton of money renting. I'm glad with how we did our trial at the beginning, but it may not be the best way for you. Committing to buying and selling something in a short period of time can be really stressful. And if you make a mistake, or pay too much money, or have an accident, you can be out a lot of money. It's also much different now with the sharing economy, 
with websites like RV Share or Outdoorsy. You can find more varieties of RVs for rent and at much lower nightly prices. I'll put the links to those websites down in the description below. So including our first tab trailer, we've owned five different campers in the last 12 years. While we were looking to buy the tab, I found and bought a full-size GMC diesel cargo van as the tow vehicle and did a basic conversion to it to add more seats and a fold-out bed in the rear. The cost of the diesel van was about $21,000 at the time and the simple conversion was done by El Capitan Vans in Orange County, California and that cost about six grand. The idea was that just in case we felt the tab was too small, we had this other indoor space in the van that was big enough to stretch out when the weather was bad or for whatever reason we couldn't go outside. It was a three quarter ton van with a Duramax diesel, so it was plenty powerful to tow a much bigger trailer if we decided to upgrade. And that's exactly what we did. We upgraded to our RV number two, which was a 2007 Airstream 25 front bedroom ocean breeze model. We paid $45,000 for it. After taking several trips with a tab, we decided that we loved the lifestyle and we wanted to dive in head first to get a bigger trailer. During this whole time, we always remember that Airstream that we saw back at the dealership when we were looking for tabs. So after another intense search online, we found an amazing deal at an RV dealership that had recently gone out of business down in San Diego. Because the 2008 recession had just started earlier that year, the RV industry had taken a big hit. The timing was really good for us to buy an Airstream at this time. Instead of the listed sticker price at $75,000, we were able to buy the exact model we wanted for only $45,000. But once again, we thought it was still too much to pay for a travel trailer. In retrospect, we made the right choice. It was the perfect size RV for us for the first seven years while we explored US and Canada. We also did know at the time that owning an Airstream wasn't like owning any other travel trailer. The Airstream opened up the door to a big community of Airstream owners who are like-minded people who appreciated the design aesthetic their historical importance and our mutual love for travel. We initially mostly stayed in campgrounds while visiting cities and ate our way around the country. And eventually over a few years we graduated to primarily boondocking in nature and visiting state parks and national parks. Our vehicle and Airstream combo was still suitable for this change in our travel style but we knew that we were starting to push the limits of where we could go. And in 2015, we visited the last of the 50 United States when we spent the summer up in Alaska. While we were there, we pushed the Airstream to go to far more places than it was ever designed to go. Even though we mostly escaped unscathed with the exception of a failed set of trailer brakes and countless things on our rock guards, we knew it was time for us to switch again. So as soon as we came back to the lower 48, we started looking at new options. So this is RV number three. We downsized to a four-wheel camper Grand B model on an F250 4x4. For the pair, we pay $60,000 for it. Our criteria for this new rig was that it needed to be smaller, reliable, off-road capable, seats five, and sleeps five people. Because our plan was to have minimal downtime while we did the switch, we also wanted to be as close to factory turnkey ready as possible. Our plan was to head south into Mexico for the majority of the year. We took delivery of the truck in November, we took delivery of the truck camper in December, and by the first week of January, we had crossed into Baja, Mexico. At the time, ultra low sulfur diesel was not readily available across the whole country, so we opted to go with a gasoline engine in the truck. We narrowed it down pretty quickly to a 4x4 pickup truck with a small slide-in truck camper. Our final two choices for the truck camper were Alaskan campers from Washington, or four-wheel campers from California. In the truck, we narrowed down to a Ford F-250 gasoline 4x4 with a long eight-foot bed. We ended up choosing the four-wheel camper Granby model with a front dinette because it sleeps three kids on the top in the king-size bed and the dinette converts to a full-size bed where me and Marlene can sleep down below. We also chose the four-wheel over the Alaskan because it was lighter in weight and was slightly lower in cost. But I don't think the cost difference really is that significant. We probably would have been just as happy with either one. And for all of 2016, we traveled across most of the states in Mexico and then back up to Canada and went east to see the remaining provinces that we hadn't seen yet, including Newfoundland and Labrador. It was a really great choice for us and we were really happy with the added mobility. But this setup did come at a cost of not having a dedicated workspace for me because at the time I was still working full time as a web developer. 
So that leads us to RV number four, which is the 2017 Casita Spirit Standard model. It's a 17 foot travel trailer that we pay $18,000 for it. Towing a small trailer with the slide-in truck camper turned out to be a great option for boondocking in North America. Just for a peace of mind and simplicity's sake, we were glad that we didn't have to tow a trailer in Mexico. But in 2017, we took our new dual camper setup for another loop around the western states in the United States and visited all the places that we thought our Airstream was too big to take to. And it was during that year when we started plotting our next move, which would come in 2018. Now that we visited every state and province in the US and Canada, and almost everywhere in Mexico, our new plan was to ship a vehicle to Europe and start exploring there. Even though the Casita was a short-lived experiment, it served its purpose by providing more workspace for me during that year. And just like our first TAP trailer, when we bought the Casita, we knew that it would hold its value and be in high demand if we ever decided to not keep it. Once again, we sold it for the same price that we had paid for it initially. We added a couple thousand dollars with the upgrades in the meantime, but it was totally worth it for that one year of ownership. For Europe, initially we thought that we would just ship the F-250 and four-wheel camper. But after taking a deeper look and knowing the poor fuel economy of the big V8 engine and the high prices of gasoline in Europe, we once again decided to switch our camper setup. We sold our F-250 and four-wheel camper to a couple who we had met a few years ago on the road. They're also full-time travelers and fellow Airstream owners. We had paid $60,000 for the combo and sold it for about $40,000. It was the most we've lost, but I think what we got back in return was totally worth it. The truck and camper had taken us to the farthest places we've ever been in two foreign countries, and that's the kind of traveling we wanted more of. This time we had some time to build out something that was just right for us. So that takes us to RV number five, which is this one, a self-built Sprinter 4x4, 170 wheelbase crew van. We pay $60,000 for the van, brand new from the dealership, and put about $10,000 into the build out. A Mercedes Sprinter van turned out to be the best choice for its size, fuel economy, and the readily available service locations and parts all over Europe. We were unsure whether a 4x4 option would be feasible because of its scarcity and the added cost, but it ended up being the reason why we chose it over other van platforms like the Ford Transit or the Ram Promaster. We happened to find a 4x4 model with the exact same color with the exact same options that we would want at a local dealership near Marlene's parents' house where we were planning to do the build. Somebody had special ordered this van from the dealership a year before, but because he couldn't get enough money for his trade-in, he backed out. It just seemed too perfect for us to pass it up, so we took the opportunity and jumped right in. We documented the whole buying process and most of the build in our other channel. I'll put a card right here if you wanna go check out those videos. Even though the 4x4 was significantly more expensive, we knew that the resale value would be much better if we ever decided to sell again. From selling our casita, our truck, and our four-wheel camper, we were able to come up with the $60,000 to buy this from the dealership without having to take out a loan. You might be wondering why we decided to build this time around instead of buying something that was ready from the factory. The main reason is because there are five of us and there really just isn't any Sprinter 4x4 vans that are designed for five people. Even if we could find one, we would have spent at least twice as much on it. And that would not have been a good value. We would never recoup the cost if we ever decided to sell this in the future. We built about 90% of everything in the van in the first 30 days to the point where it was ready for us to move in. And three months after we bought it, we left California, headed for the East Coast so we can put the van on a cargo ship in Baltimore on its way to Europe. And two months after that, we found ourselves in Zeebrugge, Belgium, as we got back in the van and started our adventures around Europe. And even till this day, we're still making little small tweaks and improvements all over the van. And that's the advantage of being able to build something yourself. This has proven to be the ideal vehicle for exploring Europe with. It's narrower than the F-250, uses about half the amount of fuel, and it can be easily serviced everywhere. We've not had any serious issues with the van in almost two years of ownership, and we were able to find a shop in Romania that did the 20,000 mile service that was factory authorized. At first we thought buying a Sprinter van would help us blend in a little bit because there are Sprinter vans everywhere in Europe, but in reality the 4x4 model is really rare, so is the paint color. But the biggest problem is probably our California license plate. Because we look a little bit out of place, we get random people coming up to us everywhere we go wanting to chat. We've not really had this since the first few years of us owning the Airstream. 
Back then, airstreams were still pretty rare, and everyone wanted to talk to us when we would stop somewhere. I think this still happens to current airstream owners, but because of their massive rise in popularity over the last 10 years, people are very used to seeing them now. From our first 2007 GMC diesel van to our 2017 Sprinter 4x4 diesel van, we have come full circle. I hope this gave you guys some ideas of the reasons why we chose these five RVs that we've had over the last 12 years. I would also love to hear your thoughts on what kinds of RVs that you're considering, or if you already own one, the reasons why you chose it. I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. I want to give you guys a thorough background on how we chose the five RVs that we've owned before we dive into showing you how to make the right choices to pick your own RV. That's going to be the topic for our next video in this Adventure Mobile series. I want to give a big thanks to Bob and Tony who are our very first patrons on our Freely Roaming Patreon page. You guys are amazing, you've been supporting us for a long time and we're thrilled to have you here with us. We could not have done this without your support. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click that subscribe button below so you don't miss the next video in this series. I will also appreciate if you can hit that like button below to help us grow this channel. Thank you so much for sticking around till the end and I hope to see you guys in the next video.